Hi everyone, I'm Ludo. I'm the product manager leading Responsible AI for Gemma. And today I want to tell you about two aspects of our approach. First, how we built it with responsibility in mind, and then how you can use our toolkit to deploy it uh, with the same mindset of responsibility. I'm really excited, and I've been really excited to listen to Janine and Oriol discuss many opportunities, especially around healthcare. Uh, but I think it's, it's still important to keep in mind that AI has also the potential to aggravate some societal challenges by reinforcing unfair biases, for instance, or by misrepresenting a reality. And that's why we believe it's really imperative when building and, deployment and deploying AI to do it with a responsible approach. So at Google, this, um, this works builds on our AI principles that we first released in 2018. And these principles guide the development of our Google product and help us assess every single AI application we produce. Concretely, the prompt questions like, will this application be socially beneficial? Or can this specific application lead to harm in any way? And with Gemma, since it's an open model and it can be used on many different surfaces by many different actors in many different use cases, those questions are even more important for society. So for that reason, we've taken an extra care when applying our principles. Because AI for everyone matters only if it's safe and responsible for everyone. So concretely, our approach on responsible AI for Gemma lies on three pillars. First, what we've done. We've made our best effort for Gemma to be as safe as possible by design. Then we have evaluated the models transparently and robustly, and we've shared those, and we're sharing those evaluations transparently with you in our transparency report, and I'll tell you a bit more about that. And then what we're doing for us all and for you, the developer community, to help deploy Gemma responsibly. And that's mostly the Responsible Generative AI Toolkit. So let's dive into those three pillars. First, safety. Both our pre-trained and instruction tuned models are built to be safe by design. What does that mean? For our pre-training data, we've filtered it extensively. So we, are rem we have removed many potentially problematic elements like personal information. And that helps make application built on top of a pre-trained Gemma safer. So for instance, if you want to build a chatbot by tuning pre-trained Gemma, your chatbot is much less likely to spit out some bad information like social security numbers and stuff like that. When it comes to instruction tune models, we have used techniques rather classic, like supervised fine tuning or reinforcement learning with human feedback, but specifically for safety. And that has brought really good results in which I'm, I'm going to present right now. And that leads to the second pillar, robust and transparent evaluation. So Gemma is tested for safety, but it's also tested for privacy, societal risk, data memorization, as well as other dangerous capabilities. And we've done that in many different ways. We've compared Gemma with other existing models, specifically for safety, and I'll come back to those results in a second. We've also run the largest number of academic benchmark on safety and sociocultural risk to make sure that Gemma is safe for you, for your application, and the results are all in our transparency report. I encourage you to check them out. It's all available online. And finally, we have run our own internal evaluation. This consists of automated red teaming, mostly on our safety policies, but also a lot of manual testing closer to research to test for advanced model capabilities and potential risks. For instance, the potential ability of the model to increase risk around a nuclear, nuclear risk or uh, chemical, biological issues. And I want to I wanna just deep dive on the comparison we've done with other models. In particular, we've compared Gemma models with Mistral 7B, the V0.2 Instruct. And <clears throat> to do so, we've compared the results of the models 
on 400 prompts that cover a large number of safety issues. The results were rated by professional raters, and what we can see is that GMS 7B is safer than Mistral 7B 58% of the time. That's great, but I think what's even more impressive is that GMAT 2B, the much smaller model, is also safer than Mistral 7B 56% of the time. And let me tell you, I'm really proud of those results because they really reflect the strong effort and the strong commitment we've made to make Gemma safe and responsible for your development. Until now, I've mostly talked about what we've done to build Gemma responsibly. But the risk mitigation should be tailored to your application and your specific use case. And so what's really, what really matters is to make the deployment of Gemma responsible. And for that, we've released a series of tools, assets, and guidance, and that's the Responsible Generative AI Toolkit, and that's our third pillar in our responsible approach. Let me, let me dive into the toolkit, um, basically, if I can. Yes, uh, <laughs> if they let me. Um, so the toolkit includes three things. It includes a novel methodology to build safety classifiers with a very small number of data points. It includes also a model debugging tool to investigate GMA results and improve them if there's an issue. And finally, it includes guidance, best practices, and lesson learned at Google for each step of model development. And I'll, I'll dive into it. So for safety, as you've probably experienced, as you probably know, you can do all your best efforts to tune a model to be safe. A bad outcome is unfortunately always possible. And classifiers are a good answer to that. They help you filter out those bad examples. The problem is that the classifiers that are available on the shelf don't necessarily match your own use case. So for instance, if you're doing a summarization application that summarizes sci-fi stories, you might not want to filter out violent content. Because maybe in your specific use case, violence is part of the specific style of your author. Uh, it's, it's an intrinsic characteristic of this good story, and you don't want to filter that out. And so classifiers are not necessarily the best uh, response, especially the ones that are um, out, out of the shelf. So what we've done is like we have uh, developed a methodology, a novel methodology for you to build classifiers that are really adapted to your specific use case. It uses parameter efficient tuning techniques to tune Gemma into a classifiers. And um, to help you implement it, we have released the code lab and a step-by-step -step example to train a model to be a hate speech classifier. So for that, we've used a, a publicly available data set, the ethos data set. It has 800 comments coming from YouTube and Reddit. And with only 200 of those comments, so 25% of the data set, we've managed to be state of the art on the ethos leaderboard. This new methodology is not very spread yet. It got released very recently. I'm really looking forward to see like what type of classifiers you can build with it. And um, yeah, I, I'm very curious about it. But classifiers, although they're very helpful to filter out the content, they're not necessarily the only solution. What you want at the end is your model to be directly aligned with your policies. And there are many techniques to do so, including a few short examples. But the problem with prompting is that today, as you know, as we all know, it's as much an art as it is a science. So what we're doing is that we are releasing the first LLM prompt debugger based on saliency methods. It's built on top of our debugging platform, which is an open source platform called Lit, and it works out of the box with Gemma. So concretely, saliency methods they allow you to know which part of a prompt is most responsible for the output, a specific output. That way, you can iterate on your prompt by looking at the output you like and the output you don't like. Concretely, 
If there's a bad examples, it will tell you'll be able to know which part of your future examples is most responsible for that and which part you need to change. If there's an example, if there's an output of the model that you really like is exactly what you want your model to produce, you'll know which example is mostly responsible for that so that you can add more example of that type and you can expand on it. That's our first LLM debugger. And um, I'm also looking forward to see like how you will use it. But a responsible approach is not only about setting classifiers or debugging your model. It's more about anticipating risk and asking the right question at each step of the development. So in the toolkit, that's why we're sharing lesson learned over the years for each step of the development. For instance, how to write a comprehensive policy, how to create an evaluation data set that is adversarial enough and exhaustive? Or what should you include or not include in your transparency report? All those questions are really important, especially because as you've probably experienced, issues cascade from one step to another. So if you don't set comprehensive policies, that will likely result in a fuzzy labeling of your tuning data, in a bad evaluation, and eventually in a poor quality model. And so, for this reason, on top of setting classifiers, on top of debugging your model, asking the right question, and trying to answer them properly at each step of the model development is really key. We've shared some of the way we do it uh, at Google. So thank you very much for, for your time. Uh, we've put a lot of effort for Gemma to be safe and responsible. And I really hope that the toolkit will help you do the same when you deploy Gemma. <laughs>